Hi, I'm Kevin, and this is Jumperless. It's a jumperless, solderless breadboard. So instead of needing to use jumper wires to connect up a circuit, it can actually wire itself. So it uses a big matrix of analog crosspoint switches, and it can route any signal to any other place on the breadboard. This uses CH446Q analog crosspoint switches. Basically works like a telephone network. Actually, a lot of the theory for this comes from 1960s Bell Labs papers about how to route phone calls through a telephone network. Originally, it was literally a grid of crossed bars. If you wanted to make a connection, you would clip this bar to that bar. And that's where the word crossbar switch comes from. Now they have them in silicon. In school, our labs for engineering classes, like for electronics classes, we would put something together on a breadboard. And just putting down the connections took 10 minutes at most, 15 minutes. And then you'd spend the other two hours of lab figuring out that your connect, you, ac you was actually one row off. I was very surprised to find out someone else hadn't made something like this. So I was like, so someone needs tried. to do it. People have tried and then they got to a point where it's really complicated right. to make it work. And I was just foolhardy enough to continue. Well, you've created something very cohesive. I mean, the branding is very beautiful. Thanks. And the design and everything. So <clears throat> what exactly went into it? There's a bit of, I noticed 3D printing and circuit board design yeah. and all of that. And also firmware. Yeah. So it's a very full stack product. I actually had to have the spring clips custom manufactured hmm. um, because no one would sell me a spring clip at any price from a breadboard. Really? Yeah. Crazy, right? I would have had to like sit there and pick them out with a tweezers. Um, but yeah, so these ones actually have a hole for all the LEDs so you can you can shine through the circuit board. So you said that there's some cross points on the back there. Could you tell me a little bit about the integrated circuits that you picked and exactly what they're doing? So there's eight by 16 analog cross point switches and they all have connections to one another. Right. Uh, and they are CH446Qs. They are pretty obscure chip. You don't see them a lot out there. I've never heard of them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and it basically works like a telephone routing network. So you can plug in a probe right here and, you know, just poke out connections. You can just say, I want to connect that to that and it will find a way to make that connection for you. Hmm. Or it just takes really simple commands over ASCII. Anything that will send it something over UART, it will accept that command. There's no, there's no security involved right. here. It will okay. <laughs> accept anyone's commands at any time. Um, so yeah, it will also, you could also use Wakwi. I have a little script, an app that will pull your <coughs> Wakwi project for changes. And mm. anytime you change anything, it will reflect that on the board oh, instantly. I noticed that there's an RP2040. Yeah. Is that your favorite microcontroller? It is. I, I was, my bias is ESP32s. Fair enough. What's, That's, what's kind of the uh, benefit or the selling point for you? Uh, I can run all these, um, all these cross point switches on PIO. Mm. So even if they have kind of a little custom uh, interfacing language, I can just right. send, it, send it data and forget about it in PIO. For people that don't know PIO is programmable <laughs> input output, is that right? Yes. It's a, it's a thing on the RP2040 that is basically a separate, really simple computer that is always running. So it doesn't take any of your clock cycles to make something happen. It is six months later, and one prototype revision later, and four Vs later. This so is you've fun. got a new iteration, you've got a new probe. Yes. All right, let's take a look. Shit, it's the cops. Uh, so what happened was we were at DEF CON, and I got the badge and like there was some like rumor like an hour before like the badges were given out. Yeah. And I was like, someone was like, oh, it's the new RP2040. And I was like, no way. <laughs> okay. I basically hung out at DEF CON reading the 1100 page data sheet. I read it twice before the end of DEF CON. Then went and found the Raspberry Pi people and they were like lovely. We were like hanging out. Like the people who designed the silicon, we were like hanging out. So cool. Yeah. Okay. So let me get this straight. You're one of the first people to incorporate it in a somewhat commercial product. Yes. 2350. Yeah. Did yeah. you have to alter your circuit at all or is it drop in for the 2040? Well, I altered it because it was better. It's generally like in its most broad strokes the same, but 
Now I have eight ADCs. I uh, don't need a GPIO expander, which is huge. Saving a part is sick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it can also emulate 32 USB devices if you wanted to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've been so deep in the woods with, with USB endpoints and like how USB full speed works. Nice. We're like getting close to using all 12 megabits per second. So one endpoint is a Python REPL. Hmm. So you can just send it any Python code and it will run it in like, you know, a set of functions saying connect that to that. And then one is just like, that is any UART you send it. Uh, and it's also a gaming platform. <laughs> it's 14 by 30. The best part is uh, because at that resolution, all first person shooters look the same. Right. I was gonna make a whole menu of like Halo, Call of Duty, and whatever, and it all just actually is playing the same game. Oh yeah, there's there's a gun and walls, and you shoot stuff. This is what it was about. Um, it's got two layers of PCBs. We got two buttons, so if we want to go in disconnect mode, you just click the back like an eraser. If you want to go in connect mode, you click the front. It also will switch over to analog measurement mode. That will measure whatever voltage you want. That's also routable through a uh, op amp buffer. So you can actually say, I want this row connected to the end of this pin. And this will put it wherever the hell you want. Does the probe itself have any logic? Does it have a microcontroller? No, it does not. This is the most hacky logic that's ever been made. I have, you know, a TRRS audio jack. So it does LED data and two buttons and a switch and an analog line and ground and power. And that's actually all multiplexed over four lines. Because a lot of those go into the switching matrix. And so depending on what mode it's in, it could be I'm trying to read the buttons and then we can also read where the state of the switch is by measuring how much current is being used by the LEDs. It's, it's a hack. So what's the demo that we're gonna take a look at? Every project I do outside of uh, jumperless is, is vacuum tubes. It's just what I do. I don't know why, it's what I do. So, bad jack from last year was magic eye tubes. Uh, the, the Supercon 2023 badge was a uh, vector scope and it has like a analog signal generator that it, you know, pumps out. So I was like, I'm going to make magic eye tubes move with the signal it generates. Does anyone remember how to fucking make the badge work? No. Uh, We're proving that jumperless is actually analog. Yes. Yeah, it's, this is easy to fake with digital and like, I'm sure you believe me, but it's fun to show that it, it really is analog, you know? Badass, all right, <laughs> yeah. let's go check it out. Cool. <laughs> so, uh, let's do sign. And then we can make it a square wave. Oh, no, we'll just do a sine wave. So what these are doing is just reflecting the voltage that comes out of here. They're basically like an old TV, but it's as simple as there is like just one wire with like a negative charge and then shooting electrons over it. And then the charge on that wire decides how far they deflect before they hit the phosphor on the front. So they were used for tuning radios. More common in like a round format, but it used to be like you would tune your radio and then when the, they came together, that's when you were like into. Yeah, even epoxy the back. Is like this? I don't know. I. It's hot here. How is it hot here though? Or something. Yeah. Well, if you touch, I think you were like. Oh, I'm so sorry. I have two extra decks. The other two are actually the rails. Uh, I can pick that. Seems good. Click to enter that, and you can actually see on the tube that is probably whatever I entered, probably eight volts or six volts. So everyone wants a full-size breadboard for these. That's everyone's like a really common question, but I mean. The math is such that it would go up four times in cost and no one would want that because it needs more right. connections on the back end than 
even just a double. So it scales quadratically. It's a square cube law. It's super weird because it's like, if you think about it, like the nodes are like the skin of an animal. If you have twice as big of an animal, it has four times as much volume. The uh, compromise is that these have 14 pin daisy chain headers. So they can, you can stick two of these together side by side and just plug in the leftmost one. And it will send, I mean, it'll have spy to send to the next one, but you can send eight analog connections and power over to the next one. I also noticed you have some pin headers up here. Is that compatible with uh, Feather Form Factor or what is that? Uh, it's a uh, Arduino Nano, which is oh, okay. the closest I could find to some kind of standard everyone agrees right. on. So you can get the uh, Nano ESP32s or whatever. Yeah, it was, Why no one numbers? agrees. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. So uh, if people want to find the V5, where can we check that out and how can we support the project? Uh, so yeah, the crowd supply campaign is in pre-launch right now, so subscribe for updates. It'll be the same link when it actually becomes a real crowdfunding campaign. Right. But yeah, do you want me to give a URL? Yeah, Probably. we'll put the URL up there. <laughs> yeah. right. If you guys want to support Kevin's stuff, it's pretty awesome. Coming out. Go check it out. Here. You can put a QR code in a video. Hey. If someone manages to scan this and is watching this on their phone right now, I will be really stoked about that. <laughs> Go check it out. Thank hey. you, Kevin. Yeah, thank you. Cool. That was good, this, this clip. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs>